Stanford University. We're extraordinarily thrilled to start a new center in computational, evolutionary, and human genomics. We believe there are many challenges that we face as a community in how we aggregate and analyze genetic data to address fundamental problems in biology, medicine, agriculture, and environment. We just feel like we are in a position that we can address all of these problems with uh, human health, human disease, using data, not just the data we're measuring every day, but the measurements we've been making for the past decade sitting there on the internet. The project that spurred this on is the Human Genome Project, the first genome to be sequenced, cost about a billion dollars. Today, uh, it costs somewhere between two to three thousand dollars. This means that we're now swimming in data. We can generate data far faster than we can analyze it. This is a very exciting time for clinical medicine and in particular for the application of big data. We're extremely excited by the rapid reduction in the cost of human genome sequencing and we're already seeing that make changes to real patients here in the clinic at Stanford University. We're currently what could be called the information age of genetics. Yet our biggest obstacles have to do with how do we analyze these data. The big challenges with these diverse data sets is they come from different places and they're in different formats. Of course, we're trying to integrate them in a short visit uh, with a patient at the bedside. We have to think, how do we pick out that one data point from, from six billion uh, within the genome and make it available to a doctor who, who may or may not know about genetics, but definitely has an interest in prescribing individually, but in a personalized way for that particular patient. For example, we can now take your genetic information and, for some drugs, predict whether you'll have an adverse drug reaction. So if there are two drugs that we can choose from, we can now choose the drug that won't make you sick. And so one of the big challenges to uh, enabling this is that we don't have a centralized database with all the relevant human genetic variation data in one place. So we need really, really much more straightforward ways basically to combine data, to analyze data together, to end to relate these large, relatively large data sets to other types. And that's why it's so important. And that's why databasing is everything. So I view myself as a new kind of researcher today, a researcher that's interested in biology and medicine, but works at a dry bench, not a wet bench. Perhaps the wettest thing in my lab is the coffee machine. Everything else is dry today, which means I can work with cancer samples, samples from diabetes and other diseases in a digital form because researchers around the world use technologies like this, high throughput technologies to look at the DNA and the RNA and all the different molecules, and they have to share this data on the internet. One of the major projects that we have in the laboratory is trying to understand global patterns of human genetic variation. How different are people from different parts of the world and why might this be important for understanding the genetic basis of complex diseases, including heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. What that gives us the luxury to do today is to not even just think about one kind of disease or one kind of cancer, but actually let's think about them all, all at the same time. And so what we find are interesting types of patterns. You know, here's this bowel disease, inflammatory bowel disease, right next to this seizure or epilepsy disorder. And why that's interesting is not just because of the science, but because some of the drugs that treat one of those diseases might be helpful in treating the other. In my lab, we are committed to the public dissemination of the results that we generate. We uh, want to build tools that make it easy for other scientists to understand it, for the public, um, as well as for policymakers, because we believe that these results could be very important. I think this is an amazing time to be in biomedical research. Whether you're a high school kid or a senior scientist, or just a tinkerer in a garage. Today, because of big data, because of big public data and open data, you have access to millions of samples, you have access to all the biological tools, all digitally obtained today, that you can make a difference. You can be the one that figures out how to tell who's gonna get this cancer or this disease and what drugs we can use to do something about it. We are all stakeholders in how genetic data is aggregated, interpreted, and analyzed. So we all need to be at the table. We need to have the public, we need to have industry partners, we need to have nonprofits, the government, scientists, universities. We all uh, have a stake in this and we need to come together and make the best decisions as a community. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.